everyone, Leah here. And in today's video, I'm going to be comparing all of the gouache brands that I have and seeing how they work and interact with having items drawn on them for mixed media purposes. So as an artist, I find frequently that I want to layer colored pencils, crayons, and markers on top of my surfaces and the things that I've painted. But not all brands are created equal. Plus, I saw a video online talking about a new paint to an artist and it's called flash paint and it's supposed to be even better than gouache for drawing capabilities. So it's kind of got a better, um, I don't know, paper-like surface. So what I want to do is just compare all the brands that I have before I take the leap myself and try something new. Because I do have something and it's by this brand called Turner and it's called uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce this because I know I'm not going to say it right and I'm going to feel so bad about it. So here it is. Um, and the surface itself, once dried, has kind of a grainy texture and it does really well with being able to take colored pencils. And I was also recommended by a uh, viewer to try mixing my acrylic washes and my acrylics with clear gesso to get a good surface texture for drawing with my colored pencils and other things. And I was given this recommendation, I think, mm, about maybe a year ago or later. I don't know. All I know is I've been doing it for quite some time and I actually really enjoy that surface. But I thought this would be a good exercise for testing out my materials and I want to bring you along this journey with me. So what I'm going to be doing is testing out all of my colored pencil brands and the ones that I have I'm going to use a light and a dark from each line. Now the first one that I'm going to compare is the Caran d'Ache Luminance. As a brand I honestly love the Caran d'Ache Luminance as a colored pencil brand. They have this buttery, smooth consistency when drawing with them. They have great coverage capabilities. They're very strong, pigmented colored pencils. So I want to make sure that when I'm drawing with them, they have the same appearance on every surface. And you know what I just realized? I'm so sorry, guys. I didn't tell you all the brands of acrylic gouache that I own that I'm comparing. Okay. <laughs> so I just got like, I just jumped right into doing all the drawing. I'm sorry. Um, so I'm comparing Holbein. Theirs is the Acryla, Acryla gouache. And then I have the Turner acrylic gouache. I have Golden's So Flat and Liquitex's acrylic gouache gouache and I've also done a mixture of the gesso with the Liquitex's um, acrylic gouache to just do a side-by-side -side comparison with the more texturalized Turner gouache that I own. Now the next brand of colored pencils that I'm going to be drawing and compares doing my comparisons with is the Derwent drawing colored pencils. They have more of a clay-like material in the colored pencils, if I'm not mistaken, which gives them a good coverage. They're more opaque, um, and these pencils themselves only come in earthy, muted tones, so they don't have a lot of bright, vibrant colors. So I only actually own like three colors. However, their white is by far my favorite white out there it has this great coverage it works amazingly so I'm definitely like I'm a fan basically it's a great colored pencil so I want to make sure that they work with all the brands that I have for acrylic gouache alrighty the next brand is Faber Castell it's a name brand you can find them pretty much anywhere but I hate to say this out loud, they aren't my favorite, but I do have a few of them. I purchased them thinking they're beautiful colors, they'll work great with my stuff. However, I've noticed that they don't have that same feeling when I draw with them. So Faber-Castell is a harder lead 
pencil that I find just doesn't suit me as an artist. But that's okay. It could also just be that I'm using them on these surfaces that aren't really respondent to that colored pencil, which is something that I'm noticing while I'm doing this test is that not all of these brands are allowing this brand, the Faber-Castell, to really shine. So they aren't coming out very opaque. They're actually very um, transparent, like they don't have the same coverage and capabilities as they do on other colors and other brands themselves. Alrighty, and the last brand of colored pencils that I'm going to be testing out is a Caran d'Ache watercolor pencil. I know that's not your typical thing that most people use as a colored pencil because it's water soluble, but I have found that these colors are really nice and I like how they interact when I'm mixing in my dry media with wet media. So I also want to just check to see how these colored pencils interact with the different surface textures of these acrylic washes. And because I like to use multiple forms of art materials, I'm also going to test out my Neocolor 2s, which are also water soluble. I use these like they are um, pastels, even though they aren't your traditional oil pastel, but I really like them. So I want to see how they feel and perform on the different surface textures of these acrylic washes. And I must say, when I'm drawing these out, I can feel a difference. And there are some brands that just are sticking out in my mind as I'm doing each brand and each color swatch going, ooh, I like this, or ooh, I did not realize it was like this kind of thing. So yeah, don't worry. I'm going to share everything with you up close. Now I'm going to show you some of my markers as well, just so I can test it out and see if they do perform a little differently. So I have Liquitex's, Paint Markers, Posca's, and Molito. Now between the three brands, Liquitex is a little different than them. The Liquitex marker is, um, well, surface-wise, once it dries, a little glossy, so it has a bit of a sheen to it. But you'll also notice, or I've noticed, that they are more of a transparent marker. They aren't as opaque as the other brands that you can purchase. And I actually kind of like that. It allows for different layering techniques and different appearances, especially when you're using it on top of something. Whereas if I'm using a Posca marker or a Molito marker, they are opaque and very strong. I also want to note at this point in time that as I'm drawing with these markers, I can really feel the difference as well. It's not just when I'm using the colored pencils and trying to get texture out of them. It's when I'm using these wet type of materials like paint markers that I can feel the slickness of some of these acrylic surfaces versus the other brands. And it's making me really go, hmm. No wonder I don't use this as much as I used to. Or, hmm, no wonder I don't gravitate to these colors. You know, those kinds of things. Now let's just take a moment to look at everything up close so you can get a better view of the textures and the way everything laid down onto these different painting surfaces. In the end, all of this is going to come down to personal preference. Personally, I'm actually really glad I did this and am sharing it with you guys because I am a huge fan. If you're familiar with my uh, channel, you'll know that swatching and doing color testing is something that I'm a huge fan of and I definitely recommend. But doing this kind of test actually gave me the opportunity to just be able to compare everything on one page and experience it at the same time. Because now I know the differences between these two, diff these, well, I'm saying two different gouaches because I'm going to treat them as separate. And hear me out. This is why I'm treating them as separate now that I've done all this. And it's because I would consider the Holbein and Turner to be what I would call traditional acrylic gouache. As a brand, they perform the same, even though they're different. You add a little bit of paint to your palette, 
add some water and away you go and you can get some beautiful opaque and transparent and watered down textures and beautiful looks and basically these two are your golden right you can use these for a really long time and they'll create beautiful paintings whereas the Golden and Liquitex as a brand, they started off actually as an acrylic paint that had a glossy surface. And I, I would can't speak for them personally, but I can say that they most likely saw just how popular matte became and how great everybody was like preferring that matte appearance so they decide to get in on that game as well and create their own version of acrylic gouache however they aren't the same as these this brand you can use straight out of the container you don't need to water it down to dilute it a little they can be used just as is and still be smooth and thin which is why I'm treating them as two separate entities and comparing them as this. Drawing wise, tactile feeling and end result of appearance. Between the Turner and the Holbein, I preferred the Holbein. It just gave a better coverage in my opinion and it felt better to draw on. Now, if I were to compare the Holbein to the Turner um, with the built-in kind of gouache-like texture, then, sorry, not gouache-like texture, um, gesso-like texture where it's got some grit to it, I would say they're very comparable. However, this one just gives you the same type of feeling of being on paper. So you're gonna get that same, well, paper texture when you're drawing with your colored pencils and you want to have say dark to light and then over here on this side where i'm comparing the golden and the uh liquitex i preferred the golden the experience of drawing on it felt like i was drawing on paper um even though it is clearly uh painted over where when I was doing the Liquitex, it felt smoother, like there's a sleeker surface and you can see the difference between them too, right? So it doesn't have the same strong coverage as these ones did. Now in comparison to using say your acrylic washes with a gesso, I'm a fan of this. I like it. It's very much the same as using the, um, this brand the turner one but i will note that it, you need to be a little bit careful with how much of the gouache you use sorry <laughs> i keep saying gouache um how much of the gesso that you mix in because i did a separate test off camera where i just did different ratios and you can see that it starts to um water it down a little um and then also if it's too thick or too much of the gesso, you'll wear down your colored pencils quicker. So depending on the brand that you're using and how expensive they are, that might not be cost effective in the long run. But I recommend you guys trying this out. If you have these things on hand, grab them, do your own tests, see what you like. If you are interested in any of the brands that you see here and you're like, hmm, I think I like that texture. Try it out, grab one color, grab your favorite color. So if your favorite color is ultramarine, grab that one and test it out for yourself. I hope this video was helpful for you guys and that you enjoyed it. If you do have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. I just wanna say thank you so much for watching it and for being a part of this creative art community that we have going here where we talk about art and art supplies and how to use art as a tool towards healing. Alrighty, once again, thank you so much. And until next time, stay magical.